Hello everybody and welcome back to yet another video, yet another tier list, yet another ranking. And today we're going to be talking about easily the least controversial thing on the entire internet, Star Wars. Yeah, the comment section of this one is going to be pretty interesting. Before we do jump into the video though, I would really appreciate it if you could hit like. It does really help me and the channel out. And if you're new here and end up enjoying the video, make sure to subscribe and turn post notifications on so you don't miss another one like it. As someone who has actively hated Star Wars for about three years now, uh, this is going to be very interesting. I'm interested to see if my opinions on this series have changed at all. Because, you know, as a child, like pretty much every single person that grew up in the Western world, I was obsessed with Star Wars. Comic books, spin-off novels, games, the original trilogy, the prequels, the Clone Wars TV show. It all made up so much of my childhood, and I will always have an adoration for this series, despite me not being a massive fan of what Disney have done with it over the past eight years. But hey, that's spoiling the list. Because first and foremost, we're starting at the very start, at least, you know, chronologically in the story. Episode 1 of Phantom Menace. It's a terrible film. We all know this. The prequels were not great. And although I still have appreciation for them based on nostalgia and also just the fact that they were a planned out story that had a, you know, continuous arc throughout them, the individual films, they're not exactly the most enjoyable. And that goes especially for A Phantom Menace, which takes everything fun about Star Wars and kind of strips it down to a political drama. And not a very good political drama at that. And although the Darth Maul fight is fantastic, it's based on a foundation of a film that has no heart or passion in it. I hate to start this off so negatively, and I also hate to do this to a film that in my childhood I absolutely loved, but yes, yes, A Phantom Menace straight in the F tier. And funnily enough, along with that, episode two, uh, not the Clone Wars, Attack of the Clones. A film that just simply doesn't need to exist. This film does not have a self-contained story. It is purely transitional filler. The film is entirely set up for episode three. It does nothing in itself that is interesting. And the plot lines that it tries to create, well. I don't like sand. It's coarse, and rough and irritating, and it gets everywhere. Not like here. Here everything is soft. And smooth. I know that a lot of people feel a lot of nostalgia towards these films, and I do too. I mean, I rewatch them yearly, but regardless of that fact, they're still both absolutely dreadful films in their own right. And then we get to the good one. Revenge of the Sith, the one film that everyone holds up to show that the prequels aren't actually that bad. And you know what? I do think that Revenge of the Sith is a genuinely solid, if not good movie. The performances feel more natural, the writing itself feels far more fluid, the visuals are genuinely top tier, and the fact that this film came out in 2005 and has those visuals is still insane. It just acts as a solid finale for this grand Shakespearean trilogy that George Lucas wanted to create. And I do think that it does redeem a fair few of the flaws in the original two films. Honestly, if I could have it my way, the entire prequel trilogy would just be the Clone Wars. It would just be adventure with Anakin and Obi-Wan going through the Clone Wars. We would remove those two original films as set up and we'd just have this. Didn't quite work out that way, but nonetheless, I do think Revenge of the Sith is a decent film. Not some kind of masterpiece like some people claim, definitely not the best film in the series, but nowhere near as abysmal as the first two prequels. I'll put it in B. I'll put it in B. Next up, we have another controversial film. I mean, if we're being honest, pretty much every Star Wars film and every Star Wars related property is controversial because fanboys are insane. On its release, I really, really didn't like Rogue One. I felt the characters were uninteresting and underdeveloped. I felt it lent way too much on fan service, And generally, I just didn't feel like it needed to exist. But in retrospect, I did judge it a little bit too harshly. Now, I do think that those first two criticisms still apply to the film, but it does definitely have some decent moments within it. And on top of that it is arguably visually the best Star Wars film that we've ever seen. The cinematography and the CGI is absolutely stunning, except when and they resurrect dead actors, which I'm still not fully on board with, but you will just leave that. And on top of that, the third act is an absolute joyride with a fantastic finish. So just for that third act alone, I think I'm willing to put it slightly above Revenge of the Sith, but but it's still B tier. They're both solid fun movies with a lot of flaws, so I figured they might as well go in the same tier. Up next, another controversial one. What a surprise. A lot of people hate Solo, and uh, 
Yeah, pretty much. My, my distaste for Solo can pretty much be summed up with this line. Hot. Um, what? Who are your people? I don't have people. I'm alone. Um... Solo. Similarly to Rogue One, fan service brings this down a lot for me, as well as the fact that I just don't find the film entertaining. I've never understood who this film was made for, I don't know anyone who ever wanted to see the castle run in film form. It leaves a lot to be desired, most of the performances are subpar, and on top of that, visually, the film's kind of ugly. I mean, there's a lot of greys and browns mixed in there, it's, it's, it's not great. That being said, I wouldn't say it's terrible by any means, it's just very mediocre, very forgettable, and simply didn't need to be made. C tier. Finally, finally, five films in. It took us five films to get here, but we finally got to a good movie. It's a miracle. Star Wars. That is what this film is called. It's called Star Wars. It's not called A New Hope. That name is dumb. I don't care what anyone says. Star Wars is one of the most important films to ever be made. It is the reason that we get so many summer blockbusters now. It is the reason that Marvel movies exist. It's the reason that The Rock has a career. It's the reason that Disney is the number one entertainment company on Earth. The original Star Wars is so significant and so important, and it gained that status because it was so good. I genuinely believe it to be one of the most well-paced films ever made. Even with with the added scenes in the special editions. The world building, the groundbreaking effects, the fantastic hero's journey of Luke, it's all just solid. S tier. Without a doubt S tier. Star Wars, the original Star Wars, is one of the most important films ever made. And if I put it any lower than S tier, I would be disrespecting it. Moving on from there, I mean, you all know where I'm going to put this one. The Empire Strikes Back is the best Star Wars film. It goes without saying. Irvin Keshner took over directing from George Lucas, and he took every single thing that was done in A New Hope, shit that was done in Star Wars, and he added on top of it a new layer of polish. He brought stunning cinematography, he built on and developed side characters, and on top of all that, he's responsible for one of the most iconic and also one of the most misquoted lines in cinema history. Empire also has the best lightsaber duel of all time, it has the same perfect pacing as the original, I mean what else can I say that's not been said a thousand times? This film is a masterpiece. But then, episode 6 came out. Well. Episode 3 at the time. And although it was still good, it definitely didn't quite live up to the expectations of Empire and Star Wars. Return of the Jedi has really bad pacing, which, considering the original two films, is a huge shock. But the film's essentially comprised of two scenes. You've got the escape from Jabba's palace, which takes up about 45 minutes, and then you've got the final battle. There isn't very much notable character development, and the character development that there is happens off-screen. A bunch of the actors, namely Harrison Ford, don't seem like they want to be there, and on top of that, we also lost the gorgeous visuals from Irving Keshner. Now, when I was a kid, this was easily my favourite of the original trilogy, and that's because the action, to be fair, is pretty pretty good and very substantial. But to be honest, it's a slightly underwhelming finale that only really has stakes for two characters, of course, Luke and Darth Vader. And I wouldn't say that personal conflict is quite enough to push Return of the Jedi up to the same tier as Empire and Star Wars. It goes... Oh, in A. I'll put it in A. I'll put it in A. Because if I don't put it in A, people will be pissed off. And I don't want to piss you guys off too much. And then we reach the Disney trilogy. Easily the most controversial film trilogy maybe ever. I mean, I don't know how long it would take to even list off every single YouTube video, rant video that has been made on this trilogy. People have made five hour video essays complaining about it. People have made entire careers based purely on calling Rey a Mary Sue. But although personally I'm not a massive fan of this trilogy myself, I do think that The Force Awakens is a genuinely great film. Yes, it without a doubt relies on fan service. Yes, you can argue that it is just a redo of A New Hope. But the fact of the matter is, the story of A New Hope is fantastic. And couple that with the fantastic visuals of J.J. Abrams and you've got yourself just a great film. Every character is unique and charismatic. Finn has one of the best character arcs in the entire saga. Kylo was introduced as a new unique spin on the classic Star Wars villain that we've always known. We get a deeper look into Han Solo and how his life has transpired. And the plot itself feels so akin to classic Star Wars that you can't help but have a good time. Yes, I have my problems with it and yes it definitely relies far too much on iconography but this film is more than a new hope ripoff and i do genuinely think that it's the closest thing that we've gotten quality wise to the original trilogy you know what i'll put it i'll even put it above return of the jedi i'll even put it above return of the jedi to be honest at the time of its release i don't remember force awakens being all too controversial this one though this one ruffled some feathers star wars episode 8 the last jedi is not a complete cinematic failure 
it's also not the best Star Wars film of all time. It is a heavily, heavily, heavily flawed movie with a lot of great ideas sprinkled through. First and foremost, let's just get this out of the way. Other than Rogue One, this is the most gorgeous Star Wars film. I mean, the fight on Crate, the throne room scene, the entire opening, the cinematography of this film is absolutely stunning. And on top of that, conceptually, this is the most thematically interesting Star Wars film we've seen. Ryan Johnson, yes, he wanted to subvert expectations, but that wasn't for no reason. He genuinely wanted to change the way audiences looked at Star Wars. He wanted to give a fresh new spin on a franchise that had been massively oversaturated, and he didn't just want to create an Empire Strikes Back ripoff. Like I said, does it have its problems? Absolutely. Is the entire Rose and Finn plotline very out of place? For sure. And by the way, I'm not one of those people that dislikes Rose just for no apparent reason. I just personally think that Finn should have gone with Poe to that casino planet. It would have made far more sense thematically. But nonetheless, it is a very, very drawn out and unentertaining boring side plot. And also I wouldn't have had Finn have the exact same character arc that he did in the first film, but again, that's that's for another day. Actually, you know what? Comment down below. Do you want to see a video of me talking about The Last Jedi? I mean, everyone on YouTube's done it. Anyways, yes, this film does have its flaws in pacing and characterization, but it also does introduce a lot of interesting themes. It has some fantastic scenes and Luke's entire character arc is done flawlessly. Like I said, a heavily flawed film that is by no means terrible. Just like Rogue One and Revenge of the Sith. This baby goes in B. Hi, I'll, uh, I, will, uh, I will give it a high B to be fair. I will be fair to it and give it a high B. That's the way to get him, Joe. Just, just sit on the fence. Just be a centrist. I'm sure everyone will love you then. Well, everyone might hate me after this one. Yeah, I, I fucking hate The Rise of Skywalker. Like, I, I despise The Rise of Skywalker. Like, it killed my fandom for Star Wars. Like, I watched The Rise of Skywalker. I came out the cinema. I spoke about it with my friends. And from that moment on, I decided that I now hate Star Wars. I have not watched anything Star Wars related in the last year and a half because of this film. It is one of the messiest, worst paced, worst written films I've seen in the last five years. It completely and entirely strips away every single interesting thematic plot point The Last Jedi brought up. It decimates Finn's character even more so than The Last Jedi did, and to be honest he might as well not even be there. It has one of the most boring, pointless twists of all time, and it has a completely mindless third act where the stakes are raised exponentially for no apparent reason, to the point where you can't emotionally connect with anything that's going on on screen. And it also blatantly rips off Avengers Endgame in an attempt to cash in on those fan service points. They also gave a medal to Chewie. For some reason, they essentially cut out Rose's entire character. They gave Lando Calrissian a daughter in the last five minutes. Oh, and they, uh, they brought back the Emperor off screen in Fortnite. Oh, they killed Chewbacca and they killed C-3PO and then they brought them both back five minutes later. They also killed off Kylo Ren after his rushed redemption arc. See, this is why I left this for last, because I knew that as soon as I started talking about the rise of Skywalker, I would immediately want to jump out the window next to me. It still hurts me. It's been two years, and it still hurts me. I'm still not over it. I'm never gonna be over it. Why? Why would you do that? With all that being said, oh my god, I actually am depressed now. With all that being said, that is just my opinion, and of course, with anything Star Wars related, there are a bunch of opinions out there. So let me know in the comments down below if you agree with me or if you disagree with me. Also, like I said at the start, it would really help me out and really be appreciated if you could hit like. And if you want to see more content like this and you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe with post notifications turned on. If you want to support the channel, my Patreon link is in the description, along with Twitter and Instagram links if you want to follow those. And with all that being said, this is the official Fended Scarab Star Wars tier list ranking. We will be back with another video soon, so make sure to stay tuned. Thank you all so much for watching again. I've been Fended Scarab, and I will see you in the next one.